What's up guys? This is Corey. Welcome to CNA Films and Animation. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, two films that are supposedly based on actual events. Uh, today I'm going to do an analytical old versus new review of the Amityville Horror. So let's do a little history lesson. Um, back in November 13th, 1974, Ronald DeFeo uh, killed his family, shot him in cold blood uh, in the middle of the night during a thunderstorm. When he was arrested, he said that it was voices telling him to do it. And uh, about a month later, the Lutz family move into this uh, this house on 112 Ocean Avenue, and 28 days later, they moved out, leaving all of their possessions in the house. Uh, and they claim that a bunch of strange occurrences were happening that drove them away. Whether what they say is true or not, that's up for you to decide. Um, I do have my own opinion about it, but that's a completely different video on a completely different day. Uh, but today we're going to look at the two films that uh, have been depicted of the Amityville Horror uh, book. As you can see here, I have a copy of the Amityville Horror written by Jay Anson. This book was released in 1977, and it uh, grew a lot of controversy because, you know, it's claiming to be a non-fiction book, but it's talking about things that are relatively unknown. So, it, it did get a lot of controversy when it came out, and uh, this sparked the 1979 film. The 1979 film starred James Brolin, Margot Kidder, Rod Steiger, and Don Stroud, and it was directed by Stuart Rosenberg. And the film basically depicts the 28 days that took place with the Lutz family and uh, all the strange occurrences that they came across in those 28 days that led them to, you know, escape the house. Then we move on to the 2005 film. This one starred uh, Ryan Reynolds, Melissa George, and Philip Baker Hall. And it was directed by Andrew Douglas. My personal feelings about both of these films, uh, the 1979 film is closer to the book. I have not actually read all of the book, I've read uh, about a quarter of it so far. And, you know, from what I've read so far, it follows the book much closer than the 2005 film. However, it does focus very heavily on side characters that uh, have a have a part in it, but shouldn't be like a main focus. Uh, mainly the priest who goes to the house and blesses, you know, blesses the house. But then, uh, you know, strange things happen with him as well. Even though he's outside of the house and you know he becomes very sick, he's uh, a little paranoid and everything. So. You know, you've got his storyline plus the Lust family uh, with uh, James Brolin and Margot Kidder. But, you know, then you have the 2005 film that uh, basically it depicts only the Lutz family and it does it in a way that is very Hollywoodized and uh, so far off from what actually happened, it's not even comparable. But let's take a look at the two films and see which one is potentially better. Let's start off with the story. Uh, so the story, as I mentioned, follows the Lutz family as they move into the house and slowly but surely strange things start to happen. In one room there are thousands of flies that just randomly show up. In the middle of the night they notice uh, what looks like eyes outside of the window. Um, and also, you know, there's uh, strange noises occasionally. There's, or, uh, George wakes up at 3.15 almost every night. He's constantly freezing, uh, even though the house may be at like 75 or whatever, he feels like it's 35. 
Um, and, you know, there's just a bunch of weird things that go on. Uh, and uh, this eventually leads them to uh, escape the house, leave forever, never returning to get their stuff. But which film depicts this a little bit better? Well, considering that the 2005 film uh, strays so far off from reality, it's almost kind of comical to see just how different these two films really are. But aside from that, I would say that the 1979 film uh, depicts the actual events a little bit better. Uh, it handles it very well, and, you know, it's one of those things that I feel like the 1979 film uh, seemed more realistic. I'll, I'll put it that way. And so with that, I'll say that the 1979 film uh, tells a better story. Now let's move on to the acting. Uh, the acting in both films is, for the most part, pretty good. Uh, you know, you have James Brolin, you have James Brolin, Margot Kidder, Rod Steiger, uh, as, you know, the, uh, George and Kathy Lutz, and then Rod Steiger played the priest who shows up to the house. And in the 2005 film, you have Ryan Reynolds and, uh, Melissa George as his wife, and then uh, Philip Baker Hall, who is the priest in this film. And I'd say that the acting is alright throughout both films, but I'm going to have to go with the Amityville Horror from 1979, mainly because the acting felt more grounded, felt more realistic and wasn't nearly as over the top as it was with uh, Ryan Reynolds and uh, Melissa George and all that, uh, you know, all of them in the 2005 film. Uh, the 2005 film, while it isn't badly acted, it's just, it's a little too over the top for me. So I'm gonna go with the 1979 film. Now we move on to the score. Uh, the score for the 1979 film was nominated for Best Original Score, and it is a very creepy score. I will give it that. It is very creepy. It kind of has like children singing, you know, like saying la 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 la, something in the background. Adds a little bit of creepiness to it. Uh, the 19 or the 2005 film, I honestly don't even remember the score. I mean, it really was just kind of generic. So. Uh, point goes to 1979. Now we move on to the special effects. Uh, special effects for the 1979 film was okay. I mean, it was 1979. They didn't they didn't need a lot of special effects to tell this story. And unfortunately, it seemed that the 2005 film thought that it needed to throw in, you know, a bunch of over-the-top special effects and, you know, just all sorts of stuff that really didn't need to be there. So, you know, it's, yeah, the 2005 film looks nice, but it's not particularly needed. So, uh, I guess in simplistic form, I'd say that, you know, the story is better told on a simpler level as far as special effects go. So point goes to 1979. Now we move on to uh, makeup. Uh, makeup in the 1979 film was uh, pretty average, pretty generic. Really, it, you could see a little bit of makeup used on the actors, but you know it really didn't have a big effect on anything. Uh, as far as the 2005 film, they use a lot of makeup and a lot of, uh, you know, stuff to make certain characters look creepier, um, and it's it's effective. Uh, so, point goes to 2005. Now we move on to which is scarier. Neither film really scares me. It's just there are some elements in both films that I find creepy. Uh, there's a reoccurring character in the 2005 film that uh, just kind of shows up. He's a ghost, and he's really creepy looking. 
No, I'm not gonna lie, he's, he's creepy looking. But then again, in the 1979 film, The Eyes Outside the Window was scary as hell. So, you know, I really don't know where to go with this one, considering it's, you know, both really don't scare me. I mean, The Eyes Outside the Window, well, look, they looked really hokey, but, you know, shit, if I saw eyes outside my window in the middle of the night, I'd freak out. So, just kind of off that level. But because there are there is more going on in the 2005 film, even though it's really unneeded, I will say that the 2005 film is a little scarier. But that doesn't mean that it's good. You know, it, it doesn't mean because it's scarier, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, good. I'll, I'll put it that way. So uh, point goes to 2005. Now we move on to uh, the villain. Which, technically speaking, this movie doesn't. These movies don't have a true villain. If anything's the villain, I guess it's the house and its possess possessiveness. Um, but really, I mean, it's it's a haunted house. You know, it's not really a villain. But for argument's sake, let's just go with it. Um, I guess which house is scarier? Like which version of the house is freakier? Um, exterior wise they look the same in both films. Although they do depict the house much more frequently in the 1979 film. And in fact there's some creepy imagery that does happen throughout, you know, that involves the house. Um, and then the 2005 film, I mean, yeah, the house is there, but it's not really a main focus. It's more the focus of George and him going crazy, which is, I guess, true, but not nearly as much as they try to make it be. So, in all honesty, I'm going to say that uh, the 1979 film has the better, quote, villain. And so, yeah. Overall, I will say that... The 1979 film, while it does have its creepy moments, while it does do a good job at portraying like the characters and the story, I don't think it's a great movie because it does drag on quite a bit. They focus very heavily on the priest who, you know, is affected by the house and while that is an important uh, element of the film, it isn't necessarily supposed to be a main focus, I, I believe. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those things that I like I like a lot of the elements of the older film. Uh, Rewatching the 2005 film, I really didn't like it. It was... Uh, a little too Hollywoodized, it was a little too over the top, and wasn't really scary uh, in this in the sense that, you know, wow, this could have actually happened. No, I mean, I, I didn't really believe it. Even though I gave the point to the 2005 film, it was mainly for the imagery that happened in the film. I don't necessarily believe that, you know, the stuff that was depicted in the 2005 film actually happened. So... With that, I mean, I'm going to say that the 1979 film is the better film, but, you know, it's still not the greatest horror movie out there either. So, if you're interested, go ahead, but, you know, don't expect a 100% accurate depiction of the events that took place in 1976. In fact, there is an intriguing documentary uh, from the young son, or one of the sons of the Lutz family, Danny, uh, who uh, basically he's telling his story, uh, and it's it's titled the Amityville Legacy or the Amityville Story, something like that. Anyway, it's on Netflix. Uh, I do recommend it because it is very interesting to hear his side of the story, whether it's true, whether it's accurate or not. That's for you to decide. I mean, I like I said, I have my own opinion, but uh, like I said, that's another video for another day. So, 
Uh, tell me guys, have you seen the Amityville Horror 1979 or the 2005 film? If you have, what did you think of them? Did you like them? Did you dislike them? What did you think of the things that happened throughout the film? Uh, both films. Did you think they were creepy? Did you think that they were cool? Uh, pretty much anything at all, comment below, let me know. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe. Be sure to check out other videos. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you have any movie suggestions or TV suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, I am Corey, and I will see you guys in the next one.